Welcome to the Adam Friedland Show. Today, special guest. Would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, Michael Belandic. What's it's our, up? It's our friend Mike Belandic, film director. Michael Belandic. One of the uh, things that we promised the audience is that we're going to have a lot finer guests than we've had in the past. We've had, um, you know, the, the dregs of society. We've had pedophiles. People have done hard time. <laughs> We're going to get esteemed guests now. And, and who, who more esteemed than our friend Michael Belandic, director of such projects as uh, Project Space 13, Job's World, Hell Aware. What else? Am I forgetting anything else? And Happy Life. Yeah, man. And Happy Life. He did Happy Feet. He did Cars 3. Cars 3. Wally. Mm-hmm. Now, Wally, you drew all that shit yourself, correct? Yeah, did it all, man. All the audio, <laughs> visuals, storyboards. Would you say in most of your movies, you, 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 you come in, you say, I'm going to do it all myself? Yeah. Absolutely not. No, there's, that's like people, someone like Kubrick, who's like yeah. literally better than every person. He can like take the camera, film better than them, grab the sound recording stuff, mm-hmm. do better audio than them. And that's called auteur theory. Yeah. And that's mm-hmm. a French word that means what? Rapist. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, and I'm the complete opposite. I can't do anything. Mike, real so. quick, can you choke up on the camera a little, or the mic? The a mic, bit? yeah, yeah. Oh, hey, yeah, yeah literally, just cool. almost kiss it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Here's your rock yeah. star yeah. microphone. <laughs> yeah. So no, yeah, I can't do any of that shit. So I just try and work with people that know how to do that stuff. Oh. Okay. Mm-hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome <laughs> to the Adam Freeland. Welcome show. to the Adam Freeland show. And Adam, and you, I, you have a monologue this week or no? No, we do not you're, have a monologue. You're skipping this week. the monologue for this week too. No, I think you're aware of that before we started recording. Yeah, I thought this was going to be like a whole studio right. experience. Yeah, well, yeah guys, we're yeah, kind yeah. of, we, as the you can studios, see. The we're just, studios, we're, got, we're gonna, we, it's, it's closed for business for the week. So the we're gonna, studio is not in shape right now. Yeah, we, we'll, we'll be back in studio soon. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but for now, we're going to not talk about the studio. We're, we're going to, Adam, if he doesn't want to do a monologue, doesn't have to do a monologue. Mm-hmm. It's the Adam Friedland show. So it's sort of like a, it's like a big, it's like Adam sort of, and I'm not saying this in a critical way, mm-hmm. but sort here. of like a, like a big fat retard playing with his own shit, mm-hmm. you know, and imagine just... I'm not taking that as a critical yeah. thing at all. Yeah, yeah. so imagine like Thank a, you, a retarded boy who plays with his own shit, <laughs> but he's laid, you know, they've, he's vegan now. They've put him on a vegan diet, so he's just got fiber <laughs> blasting the, the, the crayons mm-hmm. and Play-Doh through his system at warp speed. Mm-hmm. And he's he's laid out the biggest turd he's ever seen. Yeah. And now it's free for him to mold it. Mm-hmm. And right now, the stage Adam is in as the the shit playing mongoloid is he's so proud of this giant turd mm-hmm. that he's taken that he's afraid to sculpt it into anything. Mm-hmm. For for the simple fact that he's he lives in a world of quantity. Yeah. You know, he's 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 he sees it and he says, "I want to weigh this turd. I want to know how big it is. I want people. I want my legacy." to be the guy that took a shit that weighs X pounds yeah. rather than actually create something beautiful by th- some subtractive mm-hmm. process. He's afraid of editing, I guess, is really yeah, what it is. Yeah, uh, absolutely. It's, I'm, a, I'm a maximalist, I believe. Because a true, a true artist, a non, you know, somebody mm-hmm. that wasn't a coward at all, mm-hmm. they would whittle that giant turd all the way down to nothing. Mm-hmm. It would be left with a single peanut, Yeah, you know? Just yeah. a little single peanut grain, so that somebody would walk. Ninety nine percent of people walking by, they wouldn't even notice it. Mm-hmm. Maybe somebody would say that's a peanut. That was that's, once a mountain. That was that was maybe a peanut that came out of a piece of shit, but it's just a peanut. But somebody would walk by, perhaps the director of Wally, and mm-hmm. say, mm-hmm. "That is a work of art." Yeah. And that's sort of uh, that's that's the Adam Friedland show and the direction we're hoping to go. Yeah, right? I mean, well, you can't really force the creative process. Sometimes you have to just wade in the pool of shit for a while until you yeah. know when to mold mm-hmm. it right, and then or you have some other people splash in the shit and force it in other ways. You know, uh-huh. it's very see, exciting. See, to, it's see, very see. exciting to see this natural organic. Well, he does. Yeah. You don't need to explain it to him. This is the this the, is a good, this fine filmmaker. Yeah, this is guy's a filmmaker. Mm-hmm. You ever do any pornography? You ever work? Did you um, get started in pornography? Or? I actually did. Yeah. Um, when I was at school. Do you I'm find like, that most filmmakers get started in pornography and then move on to? I think they used to definitely. That was like a, a lot of the guys you met at Pixar. Did they get started in mm-hmm. child pornography and then they, you know, because you got to work. You it's gotta, a different path. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You got to work your way up. Yes, you get uh, 
initiated into the you know that circle yeah mm -hmm. but um no but i did when i was in college i um did a documentary about these guys who were the first people to get they got after a Columbine. They made the first Columbine movie called Duck: The Carbine High Massacre, mm -hmm. and they got arrested for bringing real guns to a school. And it was just kind of like shot on video, low budget experience. But they would also make porn movies that were like paid for by people that be like, "Oh, I want you to wear this outfit. I want you to do this thing." So I followed them on the set of a movie called Orgasm Torture and Satan's Rape Clinic mm -hmm. um, that they shot in New Jersey, and. Well, where else would you shoot that, huh? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Have you been yeah. to Jersey? Yeah. Yeah, I was in anyway. Ringwood, New Jersey, and I sort of followed the process of making that, and they debuted it at uh, Chiller, the horror convention, and uh, yeah, it almost got on HBO on this show called uh, Pornocopia. But mm. Oh, I remember that show. It didn't, and I thought it was gonna be this, I was going to have this great career, mm -hmm. directing Pornocopia, getting to be uh, like a pervert, and... It just didn't happen. Yeah, so. and then you wound up in children's entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, it always is, yeah. Yeah, that's sort of the Louis Anderson story. Yeah, it's true. He wanted to just be a fat, gay freak. Mm -hmm. He thought he was just going to have sex with uh, young men. Yeah. And then... Hot young boy toys. And then out of nowhere, he became the star of the Fox Box, mm -hmm. you know... And the finest stand-up comedian in America. Yeah. You me. yeah, yeah. Oh, the family feud. I tell you, the, the family feud in the Louis Anderson household is... <laughs> Why their son became such a fat fag. <laughs> that was a big feud in that household. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the norm. You start there, you end there. That's, you know, that's the yeah. entertainment industry, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is he dead? I'm hoping he's dead. He's dead. He died okay. last year. Okay, good. Yeah. Thank God. Thank God. I don't want to have to hear from Louis Anderson's people. Mm -hmm. But I, I'll tell you, he's turning in his grave very slowly. Yeah. Because of his fat, bloated corpse. And turning into what? A custard? <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah. So wait, so you, you followed these these perverts around and then and then it just c it came to naught, you're saying? Well, what was the movie itself about? Or I don't really remember the plot of it. Um, there were people fucking, though? They, there were, yeah. It was, I think it was just lesbian and... Um, Classy. But yeah, so the idea was, I made this like short, and then we had the head of HBO nonfiction was our teacher, and she did all those great like banging in Little Rock and like you know Small Town XC, all those great sort oh, of HBO trashy undercover. HBO. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, like Chinese in Denver, that's one of my favorites. Yeah, I love yeah, that. Like, uh, that one. Why is it so fucking cat. cold? <laughs> so they got me all hyped that up. One's that one's fucked up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's no there's no train to make. It's cold. <laughs> Yeah, so they got me all hyped up thinking I was going to be, you know, living but, the dream, doing this uh, sleazy HBO uh, undercover, riding around, recording mm. people in taxi cabs. And um, they just never, they said, yeah, well, we're going to shoot this show in L.A., but if we do it in New York, you're here, and blah, 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 it just didn't happen. And I was like, fuck that shit. So mm -hmm. that was the end of my uh, big television and porn it career. It can still happen, dude. Yeah, you can still go I, I, I have to tell Adam that every day, yeah. you know. He's like, I'm 35 years old. I, 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 keep, I keep swinging the bat, and my wrists are too weak to even yeah, hold it up. I keep breaking my arms. I, t I swing arms. the bat as hard as I can. And, and it's it leaves, a wiffle ball bat. It leaves a line yeah. in the dirt. Yeah, no, fuck that, man. We're living the dream, man. I don't want to do that shit. Fuck, yeah. It's like dumb. I so you know, don't, I haven't even seen you, it. You pass it. You don't, yeah, don't want to be. it. Yeah. Oh, I okay. I, I don't even know what the last big HBO... Like they don't do it document. Anymore. There's the Cannibal Cop one, which was so kind of sick. Your dr your dream as a filmmaker is you want to go even bigger. You're thinking IMAX. Yeah, fuck it. Man. Yeah, that was a 40x so. IMAX snuff film. <laughs> yeah, I saw 40. I saw that last Saw movie in 4DX. Would you ever do a like a nature documentary? <laughs> yeah, that shit's sick. Would you ever do like Retards, narrated by David Attenborough? That'd be good. I mean, it sounds great. Let's that would be it, cool. Let I me mean, just get a couple of retards and put them out in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> and we film them. And we pretend <laughs> that's where they live. That they're from there. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's what Alone Almost Is uh, right now. Is that the name of the movie? Alone it's Almost like, Is? It's, no, it's that Netflix show where they... It's like a competition. They take them out to Alaska and they leave them alone. Oh, they and take then, mentally disabled people. No, out just of regular people. Then they oh. have like a they have a I think walkie they, talking. They're like, I'm done. I can't do it anymore. The, the but, key element in my vision is that they're mentally uh, disabled folks. 
No, so it's like a broad batch of people. And, and you know, like you know, sorry, you know, like cryptozoology, that shit from the late eighteen hundreds, where they would make up animals. Yeah. So we do that, but we put big beaver tails and platypus bills on, you know, dis- mentally disabled <laughs> folks. And then we, 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 but it's sort of like a, a Victorian style mm. documentary. You shoot it real serious about a new species. Yeah. Called the 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 platy fella. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we gotta do yeah. it, man. <laughs> we, got, right. we got to do it, man. I mean, this is so, like, yeah, this sells itself. We got to do it. What was I saying? The survival. You hear thing. that, HBO? Yeah. What was her name again? What was your teacher's yeah, name? Sheila Nevins. Lisa Shing Chong. Yeah. What's her <laughs> Sheila Nevins. <laughs> Sheila Nevins. But uh, no, but then on the survival show, so the people. Yeah, I bet you Nevin <laughs> heard an idea that good. You fucking bitch. If she's listening. Yeah, she is. She's actually listening. Oh, okay. But the takeaway from the show is the people who win are always the most retarded. They're, like Whoever's the most annoying has the worst mm-hmm. social cues is actually what you're describing. Yeah. Is a survival skill. It, and that and being a fat ass. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, always, that's like, what they found. They excess yeah. fat. Is that you, you get fat as shit before you go on the show. They found that out like season one or two is the guy that came the fattest. Could just because you lose such so much body mass because you're like trying to forage and then kill animals and stuff. You like you're allowed like three tools or something like that. Mm-hmm. So then they found out that the hack to win the show is to just come as a massive fat ass. Now Mike's saying that it's a fat retard. Also, I guess yeah, that's the apex for survival. Interesting. In the wild. Interesting. Well, no comment for me. <laughs> I know I certainly could say something. What? But instead, I'll take shots <laughs> at Lisa, Lisa Nevins. Yeah, yeah. Listen, we don't want to make enemies in the industry, Nick. I don't know. I was going to go after Louis Anderson again. I know, but but he's he's dead, dead so he can't really do anything for our. Maybe careers. if he had just been fat and not fat <laughs> and, gay. And, and gay, I think that was. <laughs> yeah, how about it? How about they where they a show where they put Bruce Valanche uh-huh. in? A, he's got to survive a TJ Maxx. Yeah. Or something. I don't know. What's anathema to being Bruce Valanche? What would he hate? Uh, having sex with a woman? I don't know. I, I was thinking something maybe a little bit more. Writing monologue jokes for the BET Awards, maybe? No, he'd probably be good at that. I don't know. He writes it for, like, the Oscars. I mm. I mean, he'd probably be good at the BET Awards. Yeah. I don't know. It was, that's his job, right? Maybe, like, He's working like, on a construction site or something. I was thinking more of, like, a... Just something that's that's the the, the the vibes are not kitschy nor celebrity oriented because that's that's really all he likes. Yeah. yeah. Um I don't know, like uh being a fucking I don't know being a, a cab driver. Being boring a, ass office job. Yeah. yeah working as a, as a secretary. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. Being a file clerk for the department of Sexy women. The Department of Sexy Women. Moving on, Mike. Uh, what's your what's your as a filmmaker? What's your favorite movie you've seen in the last two days? <laughs> I, yeah, I saw this movie. Uh, for I, I guess a Saturday night called Blood Brothers from 1989. So, uh, sorry, I'm har- I'm having trouble discerning what the name of the movie. Is. Blood Brothers. Oh, Blood Brothers. American yeah. Ninja Three. <laughs> American Ninja 3 is great. No, this is, uh, it was shot in Florida by this guy. That's the name of the American Ninja 3, though, is is Blood Brothers, right? I don't know. I'm not sure, honestly. I've never seen it. American Ninja 3, Blood Brothers, I'm pretty sure. I think 2 is like the domination or something. Anyways, Blood Blood Brothers, yeah, it all takes place in like Florida in the late 80s, and it's just like a bunch of like kids like doing like massive amounts of like Drugs. Sorry, it's blood hunt. They like do abortions, like stab someone to death with like pins. It's just like a bunch of like gross out gore, abject, like um. Sorry, I'm thinking of No Retreat, No Surrender three. Mm-hmm. Well, then there was the ICP had a side project called the Bloody Brothers for a while, where they were going to rap in incredibly high pitched voices, and they were going to each have a farming tool was like the theme. It was going to be like evil farmers with really high-pitched voices. Were they still in clown makeup? or I think they are going to be like scarecrows. It was oh, be scarecrows. Like a, like that a, is scary. Like a high-pitched farm Like as killer. alter egos? Yeah. And That's pretty ho- cool. <laughs> Damn, I might have to re- rewatch No Retreat, No Surrender <laughs> 3 tonight. Wait, so this movie is about kids in Florida that are, that are killing people? Yeah, it's almost like a home video. Mm-hmm. I mean, he just said in the last two days, I don't know, they just played at the Roxy on... Um, 
our friend Owen Klein did like a Q&A with the director who actually went to jail for obscenity in like the 90s. Um, what do you have to do to go to jail for obscenity now? You say, um, you say, you say Joe Biden is a bad president. That'll get you sent straight to the slammer. All right, moving on. Yeah. Mike, um, <laughs> uh, who's, who's your favorite celebrity you've worked with? I mean, I got, that I've worked with, I got um, a little taste of some, uh, worked with Dennis Hopper for a, a moment. That oh, was really? Pretty, uh, you worked with him or you just met him somewhere? I mean, I was working on this documentary that... Um, not, a- not Chinese in Denver. No, it's called Chelsea on the Rocks. So I shot a couple oh, blocks okay. away from here. Um, different kind of person <laughs> in a different kind of place. <laughs> I mean, celebrity. I don't even know, man. What was Hopper like? Who's a psycho? Yeah, they said when he comes in, you have to, like, no one's allowed to drink. Put everything off to the side. And if anyone says... No one's allowed to drink. Well, this is Abel for our movie, so, you know, <laughs> that was the Get norm. the fucking drinks away from me. <laughs> and they said, whatever you do, do not say the word name Hillary Clinton. Or If I hear say, Hillary's <laughs> name, I'm yeah. going to cut my yeah. dick off. Yeah. <laughs> Just, uh, I mean, Grace, actually, Grace Jones probably is actually the best. Yeah, yeah, that was... Hey, where's that Grace Jones bitch? <laughs> Maybe she's in here right now and I just can't see her. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Is that, how's that sound? Was Accurate? Hopper nice, close? though? Is that close? Is that easy kind of like yeah, that? That's pretty, pretty good. Like a very gallant. I'm saying that because yeah. she's black. <laughs> pop, qu- she, pop quiz. Pop quiz, black lady. <laughs> pop quiz, black lady. <laughs> I don't know, man. I never knew if... Um, mm-hmm. What's her name? Grace Jones had a penis or not? Was that supposed to be like a qu- left up to the imagination? She doesn't, right? Not, not to my knowledge. She just looks very androgynous. Didn't or? her and David Bowie date? I think or Dolph Lundgren. Yeah, well, yeah, was big, right. It was, like, was like they were the trying big, to do uh, like a spy versus spy <laughs> thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They like dressed in the same outfits and stuff. Yeah, they're like, yeah. Well, well, one of us is, uh, you know, uh, I'm the white one <laughs> and she's very black, and uh, together we're freaks. <laughs> <laughs> we're different. We're different kinds of freaks, and we, you know. It sort of makes kinds sense. Of freaks. We're 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 trying right now. Um, you know, we're trying to get pregnant, uh, <laughs> hoping for a Dalmatian. Is what we're <laughs> well, I guess we really wanted a Dalmatian, and neither of us know how to, how you get one. And yeah. then we recently found out that it's a type of dog. Is that right, Mike? Is a Dalmatian a black dog and a white dog fucking, or as a filmmaker? <laughs> Man. You know, 101 Dalmatians still has the record for most blackface in any piece of art ever. Does it? Yeah. Because huh. well, they put all 101 dogs in blackface oh, to really? hide from Cruella. Oh, that's right. So there's technically 101, 101. blackface performers in that cartoon. Mm-hmm. Damn. They should cancel. Mm. Yeah, man. I, don't know. <laughs> I guess that's like you could make a, it'll be a logical argument to say evolution... Narrowly, <laughs> it's a combination of the two. I don't fucking know. I have no idea why Excuse Dalmatians me? have spots. What? <laughs> so Dalmatians have spots. Yes. Yeah. So black spots, and then they're mostly a white coat. Yes. Yeah. Which the spots show up later, which I I learned from 101 Dalmatians. I used to go to a 101 Dalmatians bar trivia night back in my uh, back in my recently not drinking days. Yeah, you know, I figured that was a way to keep me sober. You could be around a bar like you're a guy going out and boozing. Yeah, you know, in a there. social environment. I was just there trying to get pussy. You're there trying to get yeah. pussy. Yeah, and I met a, a lot of good guys that were still alcoholics, but they would bring their young daughters to mm-hmm. the bar to, to yeah. do uh, 101, 101 triv. <laughs> met a lot of eight year old girls there, <laughs> and it made me rethink, you know, how how I treat women. I guess. Yeah. Because you can't fuck them, the children. You can't fuck them. Mm-hmm. You know, you got all these. You know, none, you of your, these none of my impressions work on You know how hard it is to make an eight year old laugh? They don't know what Dennis pretend, Hopper sounds like. Pretend to be Dennis Hopper. Yeah. They're like, well, this guy's weird. Yeah. He, the, Dad, I tell you, they'd he's love, being they'd weird. They'd love you, Mike. You just tell them about, you know, how you met Wally and yeah. how you weren't allowed to drink around him. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Mike. Uh, you you just recently completed a new film uh, l- last year, <laughs> correct? Yes. Project Space 13. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it going to be screening anytime soon? I think we're done with all that, sadly. Where um, can we get it? It's on Mubi right now. Uh, it's a Blu-ray on Vinegar Syndrome. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think it's mm-hmm. on like Amazon and all that. Mubi. 
movie. I want to watch a movie. <laughs> yeah, what's name? It's, it's for them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's all. Fubu is movie. <laughs> Fubu sounds like it should be for them. Yeah, yeah. If you if I told you I got clothes called Fubu, <laughs> and it stands, it's like a it's like a for us by us. It'd be like for retarded people. I don't. Yeah. Know. Oh, I will love Fubu and movie. <laughs> These are my, th- uh, my well. My name is my name is Fubu. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, Fubu pulled my hair. Yeah. I'm sorry, but your son was born Fubar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. How about Harold and Fubar? Yeah, that'd be good. And it's an Indian guy <laughs> and, and, and then the retarded guy, <laughs> and they want to go to White Castle. Yeah. yeah. Did you have any Fubu? I was never brave enough. Or or allowed to actually, mm-hmm. my parents would my parents wouldn't let me get any food. Boo. Did yeah. you wear food? People are like, who the hell does this guy think he is? Grace Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you seem like you're a former, uh, a, like a South Pole Fubu kind of kind of kid. I, I had a few Fubu pieces. Yeah. Did you have the oh. jersey with the O five? Yeah, I never. I think I had like a pair of shoes that that were like Fubu uh-huh. for a second. I mean. But I never went like head to toe like weird baseball jersey, <laughs> boo boo. Uh, that was a good look. Yeah. Nick, I, I like iceberg the most. Iceberg. iceberg was tight. I don't even know what iceberg is. It's a it's a brand you can get at like Marshalls. What does it look right? like? It's like Italian. You see a lot of, like like Wu Tang guys in the nineties with like Tweety Bird or something or like mm-hmm. Snoopy like or like a leather jacket with like I might a be pink too Panther. young for that. Uh, yeah. I, maybe yeah. Maybe but it was like the I'm 23 high, years old. High end Italian, like Looney Tunes style, thugged out. Uh, that's weird to imagine Italian Looney Tunes stuff. Yeah. Yeah, no, and that's like um. He's trying to kill the Roadrunner. He <laughs> wants to kill him by the end. <laughs> I guess that's Warner Brothers. That's not. No, is Warner Brothers Looney Tunes? Which one is? It? It's the yeah WB. Yeah, so it's Roadrunner part of. I, Roadrunners I, I kinda, is truth be told, I kind of only know it from Six Flags. I know yeah. that that's where uh, Six Flags, for some reason, has it is in that Looney Tunes endorsement. Yeah, I think Six Flags has the rights to the yeah. Warner Brothers. I guess now it's all SpongeBob is what you see. Like that's the big thugged out cartoon look yeah. that I yeah. see like all day, every day. People in life. Yeah, yeah. Black people really do be loving SpongeBob Square. Yeah, they like children's stuff for whatever <laughs> reason. I don't understand. They like. De- Dragon Ball Z and SpongeBob. Yeah, those are the two things. I was saying when I was walking over here, I passed like six dudes wearing the like per- Machine Gun Kelly pearl necklace. I'm gonna be a wigger yeah. that's into Caillou. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just have Caillou. I'm gonna be like into Bob gun. the Builder. Yeah, he's got a gun. Yeah, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna be Blues Clues. What was the book? This the, is Blur's Clues. What, what, what was the book with that at the the worm that drove the car? That's an apple. Richard Scary. I think yeah yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what was the name of the, the what was it called? Not I've, the guy that it was like Richard Scary or something. The very hungry caterpillar or something. What was that? No, I think no, that's no, something that was different. something different. It was Richard Scary's like world or something. Yeah, yeah. And then Who the it. fuck was that guy? I don't know, but I'm gonna. Yo, be I'm in, in a Richard Scurry. Yeah, but I'm gonna have that. But like the but the gun <laughs> with <guns>. and money. <laughs> and money. <laughs> I'm gonna find new baby <laughs> shit to thug out <laughs> via airbrush, via ma- mall airbrush. What is that though? Why are like young wiggers wearing pearl necklaces now that they like clearly like stole oh. from their grandmothers? Yeah, no, I feel like I've been seeing it for like the last year, but in the last two days I've seen it like 50 times. It was Machine Gun Kelly who started that look. <laughs> yeah, I think it's just a way to signify that you're not like a. You got a little feminine quality, a little... Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm a fucking... F- yeah, I'm yeah. fucking gay. <laughs> dude, I'm, I like pussy, but I'm yeah. also fucking gay, dude. I wear, I wear pearl necklaces. Yeah, it's like an evolution of the puka shell necklace, kind of. I think the same person that would have worn that yeah. now will uh, bust that out. Yeah, that was another thing my mom didn't let me buy. Cause she was like, why do you want this? A puka shell necklace? Yeah, I thought it was cool. That's good I wasn't parenting. allowed to have it. In middle school, the kids used to get their should necks I, should ripped I, up. Should yeah. I get shell braids? That'd be sick, dude. But you got to go on vacation to Jamaica and get your groove back. I, my groove's not gone. I don't know what you're talking no, about. No, you got to go there and meet a young young man. I've got, I've got groove he, for days. You know, No, but you're like, okay, first of all, you have no time, right? There's no time. There's, you don't have enough uh, hours no, in the day. There's no time because I'm always keeping time. Because you're always keeping time, time because I'm always on groove. Right. You're like a stressed I'm the, out I'm New Yorker. I'm in the pocket 
twenty four seven. Don't you're worry s- about me and Groove. You're a stressed out New Yorker, right? You need to take a trip to New York or to I'm Jamaica. I'm not stressed out. Again, you don't have enough I'm hours in, in the I'm, day. I'm in the pocket. <laughs> I'm not stressed out. You I'm need keeping a, time. You need to meet a, t- a Tay Diggs type Islander. Get your back blown out. I'm always. I'm going. I I'm going. You. I'm going. I'm like a metronome. I know what you're saying. You know, TikTok. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, you get shell braids when you get your back blown out. What were we talking about? In Jamaica. I forgot. Children's movies? (laughs) That that seems to be the theme kind of materializing on the Adam Friedland show today. So, Mike, you're a longtime producer for the fine director Abel Ferraro. This is a real quick thing, plug to. I will be at Helium Comedy Club in Philadelphia from September 2nd to the 4th. Those tickets are on sale now. That is coming. That's next weekend. So not this weekend, but next weekend. <laughs> September 2nd through the 4th. We've still got tickets left. I thought I was pushing those more. And thanks to everyone who came out in Irvine. I had the flu the whole week. I don't even know what it was, but some kind of throat infection. I don't remember any of it. It was It's all a haze, but everyone was very sweet. I heard it was great. Everybody was a real sweetheart. That's probably the nicest town I've been to so far. Uh, but yeah, please, Philadelphia, come out. I know you people are mean, but we'll have a good time. Yeah, they'll be like, I thought you were a fag, but you're actually kind of funny. Dude, Helium is Helium's always been my favorite club. Phil, that's Philly what Helium? They say. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people say that's one of the best. When clubs. I was like 10 years ago, when I go through there and I'd feature, like the shows, it, it's, it was always such a weird vibe because you could be crushing and then there'd be somebody that would like yell out to be angry you got in trouble for your uh, second amendment joke right i don't know if it was I said something about the constitution oh, it was the constitution yeah yeah i uh, always wanted to go to the ecw pre- arena that was pre-trump days <laughs> where is that that was like in the philadelphia that was like where ecw started and it's like the greatest fan base ever for uh <laughs> that was just a more thing. extreme wwe right yeah but it's know, sort fan- of the rick and morty of wrestling yeah, and, like, yeah. fans bring in like Weapons to shows and stuff. There Thinking you know. it's real. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know yet. What kind of weapons? Like a bat with nails in it? Uh, stuff like that. I went to one show and they had a, this person actually brought a handicap parking sign. And they glued nails to the outline of the handicap. <laughs> 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 and there's like a child like a, with a monkey wrench. Yeah. Like moshing to that like cut my life into, pe- <laughs> into pieces song. That's a great and, song. Papa uh, Rudge. And yeah, it was just fans bring weapons night it was like um, pretty sick. And so I have like a really high opinion of uh, fans. Philip. Fans bring weapons night. <laughs> That's a good name. But yeah, they got to bring it back, man. We not should not just for our show. <laughs> they should do bring your weapons to work day. Yeah. And uh, all the women in the office with big tits got to flop them babies out the mm-hmm. entire work day. Yeah. Yeah. And I pitched that, and then that's why I'm not allowed to temp anymore. <laughs> I was That's like, why you got to start standing I was like, comedy. I, I was like, y'all, why don't we do bring your weapons to work day? <laughs> and the women with big tits, <laughs> they got to put them on display. And they're like, we get it, sir, but it's yeah. not, you know, we're not allowed to do that in a professional environment. And uh, we see that you've installed your own PA system throughout the entire <laughs> office <laughs> that we didn't have before. I came in on the weekend because yeah. I wanted to democratize this place. I had to, I had to wire this shit up. I want to make sure everyone hears my idea for bring your weapons to work day. <laughs> Y'all, the bosses are saying no, but what do we think? Um, yeah, anyway. Like a dirty bomb. Yeah, <laughs> they think we're fucking slaves. You hear that, big-titted women? They think you're a slave. They can't let your fucking weapons out. We know why you're here. Um, so Mike, what are, uh, what are some of your favorite movies? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's an interview show. Yeah. yeah. Adam, I'm What's your to, number I'm one sh- favorite movie? I'm trying to show Adam how to, how to, how to be an <laughs> interviewer. Cause that, he's got to learn how to be an interviewer. Yeah. Nick's trying to teach me how to talk to people. Mm-hmm. Cause Nick's really good at it. You ever go fishing with your grandpa? I did, yeah. It was great. I love it. Yeah. Um, Is he dead or alive? He's dead, yeah. Yeah. Did you, when was, so this must have been a long time yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What year would you place it at? This is like late 80s, early 90s. 80s, okay. Is it yeah. a lake or? Yeah, lake in Wisconsin. Lake in Wisconsin. It was nice. I, but was I, it like naturally stocked or would they put fish in there? I think it was natural. I don't, I mean, I don't know what they're doing over there. It was yeah, like yeah, northern yeah. Wisconsin. So this is early um, morning, you and your grandpa. Yeah. What kind of relationship did you have with him prior to this? He's kind of like a... The close, distant? 
like a nice, he's like an alpha kind of the family, like, you know. Yeah, would you say you were afraid of him or did you feel, did you feel like you could relate to that or you couldn't relate to it, but there was like, uh, because he was your grandpa, you didn't feel intimidated by it? Uh, Yeah, that sounds good. Something like that. Okay. You know. (laughs) Yeah, I looked up to him. So was there like, I mean, and I wouldn't say sexual tension, but perhaps (laughs) the like the the precursor to that or something, Mm -hmm. you know, as a young eight year old boy, you're with this very strong, uh, you know, you'd say attractive alpha male and he's taking you fishing. And you, you, you're thinking, you know what? I mean, you don't know how to fish. You're new to fishing. Um, Does it feel like a rite of well, passage would, to you? Are you intimidated by this at all? I would definitely say there was nothing sexual, mm-hmm. no uh, chemistry, there were <laughs> no, uh, yeah, no early uh, life-altering experiences from this. It's just a nice, normal, wholesome. Uh, that sounds nice. Sort of family values type, uh, In a, very, like a Midwestern sort of way. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so Midwestern wholesome. So for the listeners deep, at home, deep, deep sexual Mike's undertones. Sa- right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very repressed. Mike yeah. sounds like a Cali kind of guy, but he's actually from the Midwest. In case uh, the listeners wanted to kind of just place our guests' uh, origins. So just run us through the day then. It's you and your grandpa. Does you, uh, did you spend the night beforehand? He picks you up. How far away did he live from you? No, this would be like uh, we go in the summer to like, they had like a house. A like, lake house. Yeah, you know, and there's like a... Were there a lot of bugs? Yeah, I don't know. Do you remember how the house <laughs> smelled? <laughs> Shut up. What is this Proust? <laughs> <laughs> like? Oh. Uh, Hmm? Nothing. I can't believe I said that. Mike, have you ever read Proust? Um, Adam's a huge Proust fan. <laughs> I've never. I just know about it from The Sopranos when he says that it sounds gay. You know, I, di- I dipped a toe in some when I was younger. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I don't fucking know, man. The, uh, the impact this fishing trip, this, this very, yeah, very little sort of impact. sexual <laughs> on your work. Yeah. Would you consider, now. okay, I guess. Oh, yeah, I mean, that's like the whole David Lynch thing is it's like, you know, his whole philosophy is, you know, he has that whole book like Catching the Fish or some shit where it's like. Uh, you I don't know. know. I, I, I don't know. know. We don't know about that. I, think I, it's like, I spent my whole life reading Proust. So it's like some uh, way to try and lure you into transcendental meditation. But, yeah, it's something like called metaphor of like fishing, you know, is his yeah. uh, backbone of Proust. his. <laughs> I read Richard Scarry. Mm-hmm. Would you say there is any kind of through line with with your work that uh, could be related to something sexual or <laughs> some sort of sexual? Have you directed a some sex sort of scene? some sort of sexual aberration that may have happened? No, or, I don't. Really, that's not really my thing. Mm. But it, it's he's not a Mike's not a horny director. He's not a lascivious. He's sure. not Jewish. No, I'm not. Yeah. I don't mean. No, I don't mean horny. There doesn't need to be like a one. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Yeah, this would be like for the therapist. I don't know. I haven't overly thought about this. But I, maybe sexual is the wrong word. Let's call it traumatic, but traumatic in uh, <laughs> in like a Freudian sense. I mean, not it's, necessarily it, like. I a, mean. No, I haven't had that much traumatic stuff, so I think making these things well, is, everything, is, is everything, forcing an act of trauma. You know, it's like yeah, yeah. Like, everything is trauma. Yeah, There's exactly. A very, very like almost everything is trauma in, in early childhood. But making a movie is an act of trauma. Sure. Doing this right now is an act of trauma. Oh, this trauma. You, you, you know, it's like so it's people that like when you don't have enough trauma, you have to create <laughs> mm-hmm. create it for yourself. So I don't think there is some like deep-rooted, horrible thing that is... Yeah. Makes me, let's, I got us... Let's drop, so I, it, let's I drop the fishing trip. Have you, did, did you that. ever visit your, your elementary school after hours, like mm-hmm. after dark, for anything? Like maybe like a, 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 a parent-teacher conference or a PTA meeting or any reason oh, why... I you, know what you're talking about. Well, you had to be at the school after the sun it's went weird. down and you saw the building after or the like sun... Or like a play went. or like a, a school play. Some kind of function where you yeah. needed to be, not middle or high school, but your elementary school in particular, after dark. Honestly, I don't think so. I mean, I'd get the fuck out of there immediately. I'm not, wasn't like really racing. To Have you ever had any, <laughs> any dreams of your elementary school where it's, the layout is different and it's unsettling? I can't, I don't know. Mm. Have you ever run through the halls <laughs> of your high school? Have you ever screamed at the top of your lungs? Uh, no. No, me neither. Have you? No, it's from a song. Have you ever been to Roy Rogers, the fast food restaurant? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think we had it in uh, Chicago. There's not one here. Where is that? 
Um, in, uh, there used to be all up and down the East Coast. They still are on the uh, Jersey, Jersey Turnpike. Yeah, bike. 95 still has a couple of Rare Rogers. The, the, probably the best French fries of any... Uh, well, I don't want to blow up the spot, but Stephen and I have been going to this new Taco Bell mm-hmm. on 3rd Avenue. It's good? It's like the sickest one. It hits. It's like very... Uh, Is it a cantina? It's not a cantina, so there's no, you don't have that aspect of people getting drunk. It's just very clean, new. Yeah. Nice, uh, high quality. Uh, I like the concept branch. of the Taco Bell Cantina, a more adult version. Because I'm like, it kind of scares me off Taco Bell. Typically, it feels like it's too baby. <laughs> See, the only yeah. the only place I know the word Cantina from is Star Wars. Yeah. So when I heard it's that, confusing. I thought it was going to be more of like a Jabba's Palace mm-hmm. sort of vibe. Yeah. I thought there would be an elephant guy playing some mm-hmm. keyboards. <laughs> I thought there would be a little Jewish monkey mm-hmm. laughing at everybody. You thought uh, Han Han shoot shot first. You know about that, Nick? I'm sure Mike knows Mike, about, you know it, about it. it. You don't no. like Star Wars? I don't know what you're talking about. Do they why do you watch Star Wars in film school? Um, no. Oh damn. Yeah, why don't they teach you good movies like Star <laughs> Wars? <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. Um You got any upcoming dates you want to plug or Yeah, are you doing stand up anytime in the <laughs> No, I'm just, I'm not really doing jack. I'm not doing shit right now. Do you have any like projects around. you're working on? I'm or? trying to write, do some writing right now. Gotcha. And, um, you yeah, should honestly, I, this I, next, uh, the story days. about going fishing with your grandpa is really mind blowing. I would, I would, I would do something with that. Yeah, this could be something. I, I, I do want to go ice fishing, actually. I've been having like a, I hate the, um, with your grandpa? Hey, well, I can't do that. He's but, well, that's why, you know, through be, your work, you yeah. could do, you could write. I, that's you, your grandpa. Mm-hmm. You're dropped into Alaska. <laughs> it's the show alone, but it's you and your grandpa. This time, he's mentally disabled, and you're morbidly obese. <laughs> and together, you find love, perhaps, or something. You know, obviously you not so a, not so explicit. Fish. But we just get two hours of sexual tension between you and your grandpa in Alaska. Fuck it, man. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Ice fishing sounds good, <laughs> and it's called the Santa Claus Four. <laughs> <laughs> the Santa Claus for ice fishing with my grandfather in a gay way. Mm-hmm. Um, Mike, is there any questions you would like to be asked? Uh, no. No, okay. Well, Mike, you were telling me before the show started that you've been following up on the life of Andy Dick. Yeah, he's like one of the, I really... He's, he's a, a fascination nas- of yeah. yours? He's a national treasure, man. He's one of these like last guys that didn't get the memo about anything, just mm-hmm. doing what he wants. And, uh, yeah, I've just been watching over like, COVID. I started watching all these live streams and just sort of following all these sort of degenerate nut jobs who go around causing trouble. And then I, I was shocked and Andy Dick like, had some relapse, and he's now just, like, for the last four months or something just riding around in RVs mm. groping everyone getting That's, fucked up I would say we should get man. some we should hand out GoPros to every bum in yeah. America and then there's a cable on every cable package in America there's something called the homeless channel and it's a live stream concept. well it's not a live stream but you figure out 24 hours of programming mm-hmm. where you use the GoPro put footage and then you give it to an editor that has to figure out a different kind of show for each homeless person 100%. so one of them one of them has SVU Right. 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 It's like, I'm a detective, motherfucker. <laughs> and then somehow make it look like he saw something. <laughs> you take one schizophrenic sentence they have, and then if that is a jumping off point. Then pick another show. Yeah, she wrote a murder. I'll write you a murder right now. <laughs> and then we have Murder, She Wrote. That'd be a, good. That'd be a good. Bomb. Yeah. And it's all on the homeless channel. Uh huh. Yeah, you could have a homeless guy that thinks he's Anderson Cooper. Yeah. 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 360. I need 360 for the bus. <laughs> and if all I need, sir, I'm at, all I'm asking for is 360. <laughs> and then we the Anderson Cooper. I'm here with E. G. and Carol. <laughs> so you gonna let you gonna let that that man fuck you, but I can't fuck you? Why? Cause I'm outside. <laughs> That's that makes you know, good. And you get in exchange for getting some beer, getting some methadone or whatever, then you have like yeah. thousands of these channels you can flip back and forth. From it, and mm-hmm. it's like you're getting right. unlimited content. And yeah. most people, you know, you always see it in fashion too that they're always, you know, they are schizophrenics have the most vanguard, you know, taste of everything. You know, that's yeah. why they're always dressing mm-hmm. in ways that a normal person wouldn't come up with, coming with jokes that, 
Yeah, none of us would it be great. It'd be nonstop uh, entertainment. I think it's a fantastic mm-hmm. uh, yeah. idea. Do schizophrenics dress cool? I'm trying to think of Yeah, basically Balenciaga just rips off how schizophrenics dress. I'm trying to think of schizophrenic there there did there was a weird turn like four years ago where young women started dressing like crack addicts. From Derelict is yeah, yeah. was very was very informative yeah. for where well, no, was like the the like the the fuzzy pullover zipper pullover and the big Reeboks. Yep, and yep. then the straight jeans. That's just that's just like crack addict. Crack addict. Yeah. Dust, dusters. They love oversized coats. Yeah. yeah, layers. Like you wear like in the winter in the summertime wearing a winter coat. You know, mm-hmm. that's an idea that a normal that a socialized person wouldn't okay, you know <laughs> think of doing except. Or like you know, in the wintertime, mm-hmm. wearing shorts. And stuff. Are there really, are there really any like uh, schizophrenic like popular artists now? Like there used to be. Like I feel like there was there was a there was a period where you could really be a fucking freak and be mm-hmm. making stuff, and that doesn't really exist anymore. Um, I can't think of one. I don't think there are popular artists anymore. I think that's like. The, I think Banksy is probably the most Dem- famous artist in Demi the world. Demi Lovato is as close as you get to like a like a schizophrenic. Oh, because she changes her gender constantly. Well, she's got a lot of problems. Yeah, I don't think that's probably the only one that's like borders on she normal seems like behavior. A real wacko. I mean, Britney Spears, I guess, is uh, publicly very crazy, but she's not an active artist. Yeah, at this point, Cher is pretty good. Share, but is she crazy? I don't know. I think she's just old. She's just an old bitch. Mm. Bitch, you crazy. <laughs> Mike, are you a Share fan? Um, I don't really have a strong stance. I'm not anti Share. I'm not listening do you think, to. Do you think uh, Sonny Bono was murdered? I do not think. I mean, he could have been. I'm open minded. Do you think Joan Rivers was murdered? No, I think she was just old. I okay. think she suffered from the same problem. She so did. people think she was murdered? Well, she said stuff about the Obamas that were like, uh, she's calling Obama gay president. It would be uh, funny if Obama killed gay. Joan <laughs> Rivers. Then, uh, <laughs> He's like, oh, we got to do something. I don't mind. I don't mind all these fucking other people online. But Joan Rivers, she's too mean. It's easy to kill her. She it 90, hurts my feelings. Ninety-seven years old. <laughs> <laughs> Push her down a flight of stairs. How she died? She died in her house. I think during uh, surgery. I think it was like a plastic surgery. She just called Michelle Oh, it sounds Obama, like a murder. Uh, said she was a dude. She said stuff about Obama. All this stuff was going on. And then this very edgy, you know, comedian. Next thing you know, they're going for routine surgery. Uh, don't come back. Interesting. Interesting. Wow, so she's on the kill list. What would you say about Obama if you were going into surgery? To give the kill order to Joan Rivers? No, I mean, if you were going into <laughs> surgery and you... If you wanted to, uh, are you an Obama fan or? Um, yeah, I, look, I mean, at times I think he's, I liked him at the beginning. I'm not y- like, yeah. uh, necessarily. You like, like when he was putting Chirac on the map. <laughs> yeah. Do you know. think they should change the name of Chirac now that the Iraq war is over? Yeah, it's inappropriate. Chiwan, perhaps? Chiwan. Chicrane. Chicrane yeah. doesn't really have the right ring to it. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Chicrane is not bad, though. Shy Crane is not bad, but it's. It, I feel like Shy Wan is better. Shy Wan, we're yeah. waiting, but that gets ahead of the. That's because that's the next. It's war. ahead of the Smart. game. Yeah, that's yeah, the yeah, next yeah. war. No one gives a fuck about Ukraine <laughs> anymore. Yeah. It's also there's Are a they bunch still of, doing that? There's also a bunch of white people in Ukraine, <laughs> so you know that the the people who came up with Chirac would probably mm-hmm. not appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. How about Shafrika? <laughs> <laughs> I said Chirac. Why don't they call this place fucking Shaffer? I have heard Shikonga. Shikonga? Wow, that's that's going hard. (laughs) Shikonga. That's that's pretty hard. Mm. Damn. Who came up with that? Chief Keef? Yeah, I think it was around that. Now, you're a Chicago native, huh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The pizza, big fan or no? It's great, man, yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. What's your best? You ever been one? to the old the pizza oven, brick pizza oven, and growler pizza uh, oven sam? I may be I forgetting know. the name. Pizza oven grill, pizza grill oven, something like that. I don't know. Like a, it's a place Mike Racine made me go, I and like, they had, uh, you know, like big one of those sandwiches where they just bake a pizza <laughs> into itself. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's one of the good. It's one of the few things you can't get here that's hot shit. I fuck with it and. Uh, can still only get it when I go home. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> Chicago pizza. <laughs> yeah. What's your favorite pizza place in Chicago? 
there was some place called like Giordano's or Eduardo's. I don't know. Did I, your really go, was your grandfather like a Chicago guy? Um, yeah, he, I mean Midwest. Yeah. Okay, but he not lived, like, he lived in Chicago though for yeah most of my life. Oh, okay. Did, did he ever take you around town? <laughs> not really. And he drove like a like a Donald Duck car, basically, like a big like a wooga, and he'd pull up. <laughs> mm-hmm. And they'd like get a, pussy off that in like an alligator suit. Yeah. Did he have a big watch on a chain? I don't think so. You Was ever, he kind of like maybe like the outline of his dick in his pants? <laughs> Did he wear like a New Jack swing kind of suit? Um. Yeah. No. I think this is all not. Oh, we're uh, thinking of someone else. Uh, oh, we're thinking of someone else. Yeah. He was mixed race, or <laughs> no? Just a little bit, talk. like a like a what? Oh, okay. Um. What? Were, yeah, that's all very inaccurate. Not, oh. Okay. Not a. No, that's not fair. Not what the scene was like. <laughs> um. <laughs> no, but your grandfather was Chicago native Michael Mann. It was not. It was not. Um, have you ever seen, have you ever seen Man Ma- Michael Chicago. Mann, perhaps, you know, like out and about in Hollywood? Or? No, I've never seen the guy. He, um, well, I guess the thief was Chicago. Yeah, no, he's but they Chicago. kept going to L.A. to do the thieves. And then they went back to Chicago. Yeah. I, I've never he kind of bailed him. on your city. <laughs> he got really into Miami and L.A. I mean, he's such a freak. Uh, yeah. I love that interview for Black Hat when it came out where he was like, he's like, before writing this movie, I had to learn what electricity was <laughs> and like trying to figure out like uh, how to build was a that computer. Was that before Thief? Like, no, before uh, Black Hat. Oh, Black Hat. And I was like. I love that movie. He's just such a fucking out there dude. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He had to learn about electricity? <laughs> yeah. I always, I always thought it would be great if they did a sequel to that movie called uh, uh, Child Pornography Hat. <laughs> And it's it's uh, <laughs> it's about the best, you know, guy who downloads his child pornography, yeah. and then he gets recruited by the FBI mm-hmm. to do hacking, right? And then he has to explain to them, I don't know, I'm just I just look at I'm child just pornography. good at child pornography. I don't actually know. And how to then hack. because of how the court system works, they've already let him out of jail. Right? There's they've given him the pass because of double jeopardy. They can't send him back to jail. <laughs> So then he then he then he's sort of found a loophole where he's allowed to look at as much child pornography as he wants and he's got a login at the FBI's website so he has access to all of it, this treasure trove. And it's sort of like a, a Wolf of Wall Street like, you know, rise and fall fever dream of this guy masturbating twenty four hours a day to just terabytes and terabytes of FBI produced and owned child pornography. He's and, not helping them catch anyone. Yeah, and he beats off so much. He's he just has the best yeah, computer. He, he gets a sore on his dick that becomes infected, and he loses his genitals. Yeah. And now he's like, uh, you know, it's obviously Leo DiCaprio is playing him. It's kind of a rise and, and fall he's like, story. Now I don't have a dick anymore. Yeah. I learned my lesson. It's like the end of Casino, right? Yeah. Yeah, where he has to go back to being just a handicapper. I mean, the, I mean, there actually has to be someone doing that. You know, like that yeah. is a true story yeah. that you're telling here. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> So well, that, that worth, uh, they they hire hackers right to like create internet security, like cyber security. I have no idea. I think that's what they do. Yeah, I don't so think they do fully, anything. Well, no, not the FBI, but like mm-hmm. you know Facebook or whatever. They'll hire hackers that have like compromised their security protocols or whatever. Yeah. Well, it's my weird, main it's point weird is that, that the it's that that's, that that's the only crime they do that with. You know, I guess they used to do it with check bouncing. Really? That's the the catch. If you're like a check it. forger, they're like, we well, need you to teach. That's where Frank Abagnale yeah, yeah. wound up. Yeah, it's pimp. Yeah. That movie. You should have him on the show once you once you figure out how to interview people. Frank Abagnale. I've I've alienated our guest. I apologize <laughs> by asking too many probing questions about Big Dick Granddaddy, but um, we'll we'll get to the bottom of it one way or the other. Dude, I it's just I saw my grandfather's dick one time and. It it left it left a lasting impression on me, and they, I don't they, want to talk about they it. They were built different in the twenties. What can we why say? Why did they all? Why, it's not the dick; it's the. I mean, testicles. They, these guys go around soft with a fucking Arizona iced tea can. <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> every gym I've ever been to, every gym yeah. locker room, it's yeah. just like, what was going? <laughs> have dicks gotten smaller? <laughs> they must have. 
It's just so funny. It's so funny to be at that stage in life. And it's a useless dick, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's just a fucking, it's a Lincoln Town car in your face. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. Wow. I'm sorry if this is hitting too close to home. Right? Well, yeah, it's just taking trauma. you back to that lake outside of Chicago <laughs> with, his, with his grandfather's massive Where, car. Unbeknownst to you, you decided to become a filmmaker. <laughs> no, it's in northern Wisconsin. If, yeah. if, if, who's the most beautiful actress that you, if you could yeah, cast you in a movie, think? you can cast in a movie about beauty. Who would you cast? Yeah, I don't fucking know. Yeah. Yeah, just pick one. It's just an interview. Yeah, just pick one. Come on, boy. Uh, I don't fucking know. This is like an... Um, yeah, who the fuck was like the hot uh, new... Yeah, I don't fucking know, man. Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> I don't know the good names of any women either. Mm-hmm. I try not to. You know, they say the key to interviewing is you try to have a conversation and not ask questions. Yeah. Yeah. You've been really peppering Mike with questions. Like I said, dude, I'm just a groove meister. <laughs> you're just you're I'm keeping, just keeping time. I'm just keeping time. You're the time master. I'm just here to set a tempo. Yeah, it's true. Bop it up, 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 bop it up. But really, Mike, one reason that I think you'd be a good resource for the show is that you're like an expert on old public access oddities and stuff and really in some ways those guys were making their own tv shows and that's kind of what nick and i are trying to do and like you know like do you, do you see do you see the vision that i'm trying to yeah yeah no it is i mean i do love public access so much and like it was kind of heartbreaking i got rid of my cable box like a year ago like during covid but i used to watch that stuff 24 7 you know and there's all these great sort of talk shows that were on it, they were great because it'd be like some like the Black Israelites or something. Or there was this one I really like called like Late Night with Johnny P. It was like a Staten Island. Johnny P E E. Just P the oh. letter. <laughs> and they interview like some guy was on the Sopranos for yeah. one second. Wow. Yeah. And we're back. <laughs> Pour me another glass. I'm gonna get into it here. I mean no, but that but they would <laughs> but there are <laughs> <laughs> delicious. <laughs> Anyways, the sewer system is really in trouble here. I'm just a fucking common piss drinker from Staten Island. Listen, I'm just some Italian retard that drinks piss for a living. <laughs> but I can tell you, this Eric Adams guy is really fixing a lot of the problems that de Blasio caused, but not but creating his own kind of problems. <laughs> and as a New Yorker, what we need... Mike, what do you think, what do you think New York needs? You're a New Yorker. We gotta clean up the streets, man. You gotta clean up the streets. We need a hero with a gun <laughs> or with act, do you actually clean them because they're filthy. I think both. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you can clean things with guns. How do you feel about broken windows policing? I mean, I think it's pretty logical. <laughs> that it's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if the it's part- pretty gnarly out right now, you know, and I think you have to do something. It, it has gotten like, wilder during COVID. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't feel like the freaks really like came out of wherever they were. Completely, and like the weed thing is just totally out of control. You it's know what like, I think we need, rather than just yeah, the 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 broken windows. It's like you know how you go to some bad neighborhoods and they have the generator with the big lights up. Yeah. So we do that, but on a more massive and micro scale, is that we get drones that shine a spotlight on every black person in New York City individually. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Well, just, you know, I mean, just so that they each have their own spotlight. It's mm-hmm. just, just they're, yeah, we're just blasting them. I don't know about that idea. 24 seven. I don't know about that idea. Okay, well. Well, you mean like a, like they're performers, kind of like they're at a concert or something? That's what we'll tell that's them. That's what you meant. <laughs> that's, what we'll that's, that's how we'll sell it. <laughs> Wait, yes. can you want to tell us about this P guy? Because I feel like you know a lot about people trying to make their own TV shows, and that's kind of why I wanted to talk to you, because I think that you could have some good I mean, insights for us. Yeah, I don't know. That was a good one. It was just that was a classic one where it's like a very small scale thing, marketing it like it's for like it's a hit. Yeah, you know, it's like maybe one guy that was on The Sopranos for one second, you know, or a guy dressed like it, and like acting like it's a real Hollywood thing, or then there'd be like show like Joan Quinn profile, some like old lady in her living room doing the high class like interviews. An extra in a play, you know. Yeah, yeah. And just these, just totally eccentric, great shows, and that you would never get served up 
from an algorithm or something. You know, just flipping through the channel, see what's on MNN at you know three in the morning. Is it prayer. is MNN still happening? I think so. Yeah, it's like near Times Square somewhere. It's just like a studio. Yeah, that you can uh, rent With out the M and M store. It's it's not the M and M store. It's oh. it's like a television studio, oh. but it's by the M and M store. Actually, you can hit both. We could have actually probably just... Have you ever just uh, out and about in Hollywood met any of the M&M's? The talking <laughs> ones. I don't mean the... Have you the met candy. the the yellow one or... No, nah, man. No. Is the yellow one... Uh, does he have Down syndrome? Is that true or... No, he just has that voice. Oh, okay. Yeah. His voice, yeah. Mm. It's like a deeper voice. Yeah. Yeah. The brown M&M, that's the sexy one. No, the green one. I think both green and brown are... Brown's also a slut. Yeah, she's a black woman with uh, glasses. Oh, glasses are kind of sexy on a girl. Yeah. I kind of like that. It's weird that they never made any of the Skittles, uh, you know. It's just the California Raisins and the M&Ms. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Yeah. They should do like kind of a thing to show... Like, uh, you know, like an anti... Are the Skittles all gay guys? An anti-miscegenation or pro-miscegenation sort of, um, like, marketing campaign that's the red M&M and he's married to one of the California raisins. Yeah. yeah like, Skittles have, like, a kind of tropical vibe, right? Yeah. yeah. It's like tropical. The Samoan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like a They're guy. island guys. Islanders. Yeah. Yeah. We taste in that rainbow. Mm. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, it's a good you? idea. Yeah. No, as an idea. Mike, do you like candy in general? Or? What's your favorite candy? I like uh, bottle caps. are pretty sick. Mm-hmm. I like Smarties, like that kind of... Uh, oh, like a sweet, yeah, like sweet a tart kind of... Uh, chalky kind of... Yeah, you know, chalky, uh, tarty type. sort yeah. of... Those are pretty good. <laughs> yeah. I guess so. I'm not much of a candy person myself. Oh, you don't like candy? I'm not crazy. I mean, I just don't go crazy for it. Yeah. Yeah. If the police department could use any kind of animal to stop crime b- besides, you know, German shepherds, what would you select? Perhaps boa constrictor? We'll start you off there, and then you can... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a t- really tricky one. I guess it... Um, yeah, something like really... Uh, Im- maybe like... Just like a... Like a Trillion roaches or something. Oh, okay. Like, like oh, an army of roaches. That'd be good. Even more. We ha- I know we have a, a lot. But imagine like, <laughs> like a, <laughs> hose. A, a hose that bugs come out of. Like a jo- mass, bu- mass <laughs> bug, good. exploding, <laughs> like a projectile <laughs> mass <laughs> bug machine. It would be I- ideal if That's you could idea. incorporate that into the spotlight drones. Yeah. You know, yeah, if they're up to no no good, <laughs> right? The then li- we just have light <laughs> turns off. Here come the bugs. <laughs> <laughs> the police box. It's like a hose. If you blood step blood on blood one, yeah. if you if you step on one, you're assuming an officer and yeah. you're doing hard time. Right. Yeah. yeah. Then you're going to the slammer. <laughs> yeah. And no one. Well, I guess they respect a cop killer in there, but mm-hmm. <laughs> no one's. They're gonna give you a little bit of a rough ride on the way to the on the way to the station. Yeah, you get the Freddie Gray treatment. Yeah. You know that fucking roach. He was a good. He was a good <laughs> officer. Mm-hmm. Do, out about in Hollywood, do you do you yeah. talk to celebrities much that regret posting black squares yet, or is that the does that seem to be the 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 talk on the Rodeo Drive <laughs> or in uh, at the McLaren dealership in Beverly Hills? Yeah. I think everyone just pretends they didn't do it, right? Yeah, <laughs> I don't think anyone wants to talk about. Mm-hmm. What's the, the closest thing? you ever got to Jeffrey Epstein in Hollywood? Um, Rick Moranis, perhaps. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I have. Have you met anyone on the flight logs? I haven't looked at. The, I don't know who's on the flight logs. <laughs> Sounds. Like so probably, I probably. Have, I mean, hasn't everyone met someone? Probably. Or, uh. Yeah. <laughs> Rick Moranis famously quit acting when his wife died. That's so just respectable. That's how. That's how people react to it. They say it's noble or something. But it's not. What is he? He's doing it because he wants to stop hanging out with her. Well, he wanted to spend more time with his kids. Oh, that makes sense. Well, I thought that he was acting so he could get out of the damn house because his wife was being a little bit of a bitch. Oh, have you heard that in your I travels? I have heard that. that was Rick like Moranis a wife beater or not? He was beaten, though, right? 
Oh yeah, he got his ass beat. He did. Do you remember when he got his ass? Yeah, beat? he got he got <laughs> knockout game. Yeah. <laughs> but that was <laughs> during the knockout game news cycle. He was the only like person that anyone could pinpoint having actually been knockout game. Yeah, it seemed to bring everyone together. There was a little <laughs> big outcry for a catch the Rick Moranis <laughs> knockout game. Let's get the sale. <laughs> the Central Park, <laughs> the Central Park Five. Interesting. Yeah. Um, interview questions. Mike, do you think aliens built the pyramids? And if so, what kind of alien? Yeah. I think it was just people, probably. The Jewish boat. people. I don't know enough about uh, who is a... Uh, mm. <laughs> are you a conspiracy theorist in general? or? No, definitely not. Do you, are there any that you're on board with? Well, I mean, I was dropping the Joan Rivers... Uh, um, Obama I mean, thing? Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to think of any good ones. No, I don't know. Nothing at the moment comes to mind. You ever see the movie Eight Legged Freaks? Oh, there's like the spider horror. Yeah. I don't, I don't what would you do if that happened to you? He hasn't seen it. Wait, what happens in that? <laughs> this is such a stupid question. Nick got himself good on that one. What happens? There's a big spider. <laughs> I don't yeah, know. Just I haven't seen it either. It's just big spider. <laughs> what, 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 what would you do? <laughs> Dude, what, we're going to be so good so at interviewing. Like stomp, stomp the fucking spider out. Of they're, no, too, it's they're too big. They're too big. They're it's about the size big. of the coffee table here. That big? Oh, that's not that big. Mm. I mean, you just have you to got to a big fat guy to stomp you know, the coffee You have table. that adrenaline, you get extra strength, you know, so you just have to go mm -hmm. kamikaze Do you think right the now? Michelin man has any kind of, like, accent? Like a French accent. You haven't or? heard his voice. That's yeah, you never point. hear his accent. It definitely seems high pitched, probably. Yeah. And um, I can see a little French or Canadian or something. What's your? What do you think is the sexiest type of accent that you've ever heard, man or woman? Maybe like an older Midwestern sort of accent, like the, the kind of grandfather. Right. So, I don't know. <laughs> so, I don't know. I fucking know. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> Have you ever seen a dead body? Uh, I don't think so. I was walk I remember I was walking through the park one time when I was a kid and I walked by like a garbage can and there was like two feet coming out of it. It's like someone was like upside down in the garbage can and it seemed pretty dubious. That doesn't seem like the kind of way somebody would dump a body. Yeah. I, yeah, think, yeah. I think it's probably okay. But no, I'm trying yeah. to think. But I the mean, feet that, were that, just... If, and if it was, it wasn't like a murder that was like mm -hmm. a, a mentally disabled person throwing away yeah. their little brother because they, 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 like, they yeah, didn't know to tell their parents first. Yeah. 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 So it could have been. Yeah. I mean, I've seen, I've seen it was like, an older brother with intellectual disabilities that found his eight-year-old brother dead from Have choking. you seen this blanket homeless person in like the East Village? What blanket? Have, have you it. seen it? This dude who always has like a blanket over him. He's his always got a blanket see, over him. I see him like near Washington Square Park a lot. Kind He's of around. Like, it's really uh, scary. Sorry, to, to, can you explain to me how that's different than most homeless people? Um, he's covered in a blanket and you just see feet at the bottom. I feel like that's a lot of them. Uh, it's the only time I've seen it. He's moving with the blanket on him, like a ghost, kind of. Mm. He just wears it in a unique sort of manner, distinct If you way. saw it, you would know what I'm talking like about. Like a Pac-Man ghost. What do you like mean? Druid, Mike, real almost. quick, Pac-Man coming back, yes or no? Will yeah, we see I think it come it's, back? it's timeless, yeah. Yeah, okay. You play, yeah, are you've you, seen that guy, though? Are you an arcade game aficionado? Um, Gamer. A little bit, not... Yeah. What are you playing these That's days? Like, well, just like very. I like the original Dr. Mario. Dr. Mario. Dr. What Mario. did he the do? The intellectual choice. What was Dr. Mario? It's just like some germs like dropping down, kind of yeah. like in a Tetris-like thing. It was germs. Thing. Mm -hmm. and he's he wasn't like, like, he wasn't checking, he was like doing gynecology or, you know, like delivering a baby. I don't think so. It's for children. That would be yeah. sort of bizarre. Well, it would be educational. Yeah, would no. it? I don't know. <laughs> I'm fucking with that a little bit. Uh, yeah, it's like old, simple shit. No, he just likes movies, dude. <laughs> He's a film director. Um, We're not talking about movies, Mike. Well, that's because you, you want to try to get a different kind. Mike could go on any show and they could just ask him what his favorite movie is. We're trying to do something different. Maybe. Yeah, I guess so. 
I was playing a little Mario Sunshine the other day. What's that? That's like about cleaning up the streets. It's like a. It anti- is about cleaning. Literally, it's like a broken yeah, yeah. windows thing. It's like an anti graffiti kind yeah. of thing. You have like a water pack. Mario has this little backpack that's got a spotlight on it, and there's these little like dark guys <laughs> in the the town that are causing trouble. Oh, the little the mushroom guys, the Koopas. Yeah, but they're dark. They're possessed by some kind of. It's called like the jungle spirit or something in the game, and you have to shine a light on them to fix them. Wow. And, but you have to hold it on them. But then the twist is that Eric, they run when Eric the Adams is making him do it. Yeah. 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 He's working for Mayor Eric Adams. Yeah. So is it racist or is it self-hatred? Um, I don't know if he's working for Eric Adams in the game. Well, it's not. It doesn't yeah. take place in New Donk City. No. Mario Sunshine, why don't you tell, why don't you tell us about it? <laughs> I mean, I just was like playing the first level the other day. I don't know. I was on Delphine, some shit island. I don't know, Delphine Island. No, there's mm. some tropical shit. He's got a jetpack cleaning up some like graffiti. So it's Mario on a private island. Yeah. So you think that, that but there is some Epstein looking stuff on it. Definitely big ask. time, big yeah, time, yeah, big time. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of those weird structures and uh Yeah. The symbols too. Yeah, yeah. The Nambla symbol or the, at least the boy love symbol appears what many What is the times. boy love symbol? Many, many, many times. What does it look like? It's like uh two triangles, two just like uh what are they? What are they? What are they called? What is it called? The equilateral triangles, and uh-huh. one's facing down and one's facing up. And they're and interlinked. They're, they're overlapped with each no, other. No, you're thinking of something else. No. No. Yeah, that's the. It should be like one th- small triangle and one big triangle. No, It'd it's it's the, one. No. One equilateral I think triangle, one's pointing up, else. and then one that's pointing down. And they're over each other. I know yeah. what he's doing. He's doing. Uh, that's he's, what, he's doing an anti-Semitism. I'm. And <laughs> guess what? We could all see through it immediately. Okay. All right, let's get our let's get our in studio. We need to get an in studio bitch to look things up. Not you. We need to get like a porny looking kind of woman, like Lewis has. You know, can we get can we look that up? The we're, we, we're already blowing a lot of money on new employees. That's true. That are doing stuff like uh, checking your voicemail for you or <laughs> typing text messages for you. Or no one's doing that. Doing a lot. We've already got a couple of assistants for you, so I think if we add anybody else, I said I, I only should need have, three. We should go skilled labor. I yeah. think from here on out, and no more. Well, assistants. I have one assistant for the show that just rides the um, the subways and then catalogs what teenagers are wearing. Mm. So they can get me that for my wardrobe, so I can wear like a lot like a you know kind of like an urban youth kind of aesthetic for when we get the set and like everything's set up. I think we should get you a Darth Vader costume. That'd be kind of sick. Yeah. That would be kind of sick. And then the buttons, they do different impressions of people. It'll mm-hmm. automatically, you know, because Adam's kind of lacking in that department, but necessary for any talk show host is a solid repertoire of impressions. Yeah. So we get you a Darth Vader outfit, but it allows you to, you know, yeah, do impressions. He yeah. needed that suit because he burned off most of his body. Is that the story? Yeah, he was fighting um, <clears throat> uh, Ben Kenobi, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Mm. And then Obi-Wan had the high ground. Yeah. When it was a matter of him standing on it, like maybe I, I, one I, foot higher. Mike, have you ever had one. that happen where you've had a falling out with a mentor or a lover, perhaps? Like a, a lover's quarrel? A platonic lover. Definitely. Like a male friend that you yeah, were in love with. Yeah, had to dump some, uh, not in love with, but um, yeah. Had some, had to dump some friends. And how did that feel? It feels like a breakup, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, you know, but it's a, uh, and it doesn't even work because they still, keep, you know, mm. <laughs> pop up. Would you but wish harm on them or? Absolutely not. No. no. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Would you say that you would wish that they would criticize the Obamas before a surgery, perhaps? <laughs> I mean, yeah, sure. That would be a. That would. would that would solve would a lot. Wouldn't be my. Uh, Involve me, you know, but mm-hmm. it'd be okay. Mm. Yeah. I think that's not a bad idea. Yeah. Adam, have you had any good ideas recently? I can't think of one. You can't think of one. Hmm. Um, Why don't you tell us a little bit more about your glasses? I've had them for a while. Yeah. Yeah. They're, um, I get the same frames. I've had like three or four of them. They keep whenever they break. I get they're the Oliver ones. Peoples. They're the yeah the Riley R. Mm. Oliver People. I got them right after college, like fifteen years ago. Interesting. Did you get those because Seven, of American eight, Psycho? Twenty-five years ago, I believe he was wearing 
the the same ones. The maybe the Gregory Peck ones. Mm. Maybe no, no. He was wearing the metal ones. Um, no, but we should. I don't know. Yeah, that's it. That's just about it. I mean, I could have. That's all I can think of for that. What about your classes? Where did you get yours? I wear mascot. Yeah, you know I wear nothing but mascot. Moscow's cool. When I went to Japan, they were upset. Like, all the glasses stores that I walked past, um, there was, like, a sign that said, we have Moscow glasses. Do you, wear mo- do you wear glasses, Mike? No, I don't. Is it because you have perfect vision? or I have perfect vision, yeah. But I also don't, but I don't wear sunglasses either. Do you think that led to your decision to become a filmmaker? Yeah, as a that's child, a good they, question. They would always praise your eyes. They said, mm-hmm. this man has... Such a clear yeah. uh, vision here of yeah. everything. Yeah, and then, yeah. <laughs> uh, No, but yeah, I, don't, I feel weird wearing glasses. On what, at what point did you say, I'm going to be a filmmaker? You knew that that's just what you were going to do. I mean, it seemed just like really easy because it was like you see these people do one movie and then they don't do shit for like five years. And then the math is it's a couple weeks, like a month to shoot something. So... Tactically, it seems like a very smart, uh, smart job thing to do. Yeah, yeah. Be Only because d- being Doctor Mario is not. Yeah, but then I realized that they're actually working all in the in between. But mm-hmm. then, uh, yeah, that sucks. I really backfired. Yeah, but it still turned out okay. But uh, I don't know. I guess I tried doing it in college for a second, but I took a bunch of these classes and they were so horrible. You took a bunch uh, of what classes? Just some film classes. And oh, it's so awful. I don't want to do this. And then uh, I don't know, just kept. And then, Taking more, and then I was like, fuck it, I'll just keep doing And then I worked at Kim's for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, Kim's lot. Video, yeah. famous New York uh, institution. institution. For, yeah. the, for the people who don't, aren't familiar with Kim's, why don't, you, why don't you explain Kim's and the history? There was this place in the East Village that was probably like the biggest video store here. And, and why is it called Kim's? It's run by this Korean guy, Mr. Kim. And then what a, did he sound like? Or? Yeah, he was, he was a very impressive. imposing. He wanted to do his voice, maybe. I don't think I could do oh, it. Okay. But um, Because I never really talked to him. He barely even... I don't Barely think I've heard him English. talk enough. He just would yeah. come in, shut sure. up, he goes, does whatever. But, Did um, he have an interesting smell, would you say? I, I would not. I okay. don't know. Um, right. Yeah, it's just this like place in East Village, a giant place, total freak show, and just had all sorts of mix of just the gnarliest, weirdest people coming in all day. And, and I did meet a lot of the people that I work with and all of our friends from there. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, that was sort of... Um, made it sort of doable to work with your friends versus rather yeah, yeah, yeah. this you know school way of doing things. you worked with Sean what does it feel yeah, like what does Nick? it feel like to have friends what would you how would yeah. you describe that feeling you got a lot of friends you have a lot of friends um yeah I think it's a what a wonderful thing man what are yeah they? <laughs> <laughs> I have nice friends <laughs> so I'm fucking up I mean I th- uh, would you say your work sort of embodies the esprit de friendship Oh yeah, completely. I don't know what the fuck I mean. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck I mean. Um, Did you ever have like um at the video store? You ever have like a famous person come try to buy a movie? Yeah, we had uh, David Bowie was a big one. Mm. He was like trying to act like he wasn't. He says his name was David Jones, and you know mm-hmm. <laughs> trying to do the whole. Uh, Did he wear yeah, just regular guys? guy by himself? No. Uh, yeah, but it's a good mix of like people like that, and then just abject, you know, porn weirdos, you anim- saw, anime people. Did you have a porn other. section behind a beaded curtain? There was a porn room, but there wasn't a beaded. But it was, like, off around the corner. When and, did Kim's um, video close? 2014? Around then, but the St. Mark's one was kind of the great one. And then um, that was probably closed around... Yeah, maybe around 2000... A little before 2014, probably. Mm-hmm. Um, now it's, like, some... I walked by it the other day, and I think some type of, like, Muay Thai gym or something. Or so, I saw people, like, powerlifting and doing all this, like, crazy shit in the window. And then it's that barcade on the first floor. But I guess now there's that Alamo Draft House in the financial district where they brought all the movies. All the movies got dumped at some place in Italy. Mm-hmm. It's some, like, community service thing. They're going to create some new town that was some video utopia. They're making everyone, a video town Where everyone could Italy. rent movies and have a great time. But it was, I think it was some shady. What are they calling it? Wop Buster? <laughs> yeah. It was <laughs> And then they somehow brought it back <laughs> to New York. <laughs> <laughs> they, is it, wait, so, so what, some shady Italian stole all the movies from Kim's? Yeah, basically. And then mm. Mr. Kim wanted it all together as like a collection. So they said, we're going to create this vision of this 
town that was going to be in the middle of nowhere in Italy. That's like a you can bow down to the this collection and just watch you know weird uh, fossil Winter movies and anime all day and stuff. And uh, but I guess it was all sort of just rotting in some basement somewhere in reality. And now interesting, it's back in uh like by Wall Street at in that end, draft house. Yeah, yeah, I haven't been there yet, but I don't really like the draft house. I think it's a fascist institution. Yeah. I don't like them either. But yeah. you don't like it because because uh, they're like mean about your phone or something? It's an, it's a tattletale environment. It is a tattletale It's a place for Karens and cops. Yeah. yeah. When they, pay, they play that voicemail yeah. before the movie starts of that drunk girl that's like, I've mm. never been treated this Misogynistic, badly. by the way. Yeah, it's misogynistic. They, 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 they enforce their rule via humiliating some dumb, drunk bitch. Yeah. We really know who the don't talk in the theater rules are being levied against. Mm-hmm. It's true. I mean, it's off-putting, but I think we should be so lucky as, as to have these places. You know, like... The best theater in New York City closed, which was Court Street Theaters. Because that place was just complete anarchy. I think if you want complete silence, you need to make enough money to have your own movie theater. <laughs> yeah. I think if you're expecting any kind of shared space to be, you know, mm-hmm. special for you. I was at Court Street watching uh, John Wick 2, I think, and a woman just brought, like, 25 Tupperwares of dinner. Mm-hmm. She kept just, like, opening them, eating so loudly, like, talking with her mouth full during the meal. It was, it was a great experience. Very communal. What was she eating? She had chicken. <laughs> she had a fucking, she had a lot of stuff. I remember she had pieces of rotisserie chicken that were, like, boxed up into different boxes. It was mm. kind of enterprising, but it was all for herself. Rotisserie in French, that, that's probably... Roti. Ju- it just means, like, uh, rotational chicken or something because it spins around. Mm-hmm. That sounds way less appetizing. Like, if you're a French guy and somebody was like, Poulet Hey, do you, want to, do you want any rotated chicken? <laughs> I'd be like, no, that sounds disgusting. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, but uh, alternatively, microwave to a French ear mm-hmm. probably sounds great. Microwave. Oh, microwave. Microwave. What, what good it mean? <laughs> I do not know what good it mean. Um, so, Mike, what do you think could be done to fix the media? Yeah, people just need to make good shit. I mean, it's whatever. It's not like, nice. Uh, so that's a good answer. Yeah. You know. Well, thanks. Thanks for coming. <laughs> thanks for being here. Um, it's certainly been a learning experience for Adam to uh, yeah. get better at interviewing people. Um, hopefully, you're not too offended about, uh, you know, whatever. Your grandfather's mouth is cock. Did that upset you? Uh, no, it's just an inaccurate uh, representation of. Uh, so what was it? Small? <laughs> did, like, did he, did he small, have a small big? Dick? What, what was I it like? I have no fucking clue what size, man. That's some gay shit, man. Oh. That's a good point. Well, it's not gay. I mean, well, it is some gay shit. No, it's just. I mean, your no, grandfather you had it, a dick know. and it had a size. No, He's but to very... remember that means you have a man's dick in your brain. Okay, yeah. all right. No, I'm not going to argue. That's why any time I. Anytime I've ever seen a, ma- a man's dick, I, I hit my head really hard. Well, I, guess, what, I guess what I'm saying is I'm not trying to actively gauge you know, these things in yeah. situations. Well, I'll know. tell you what. I'm going to hit stop on the recorder, and then Adam is going to... It's going to be a seamless transition to Adam thanking our producers and associate producers of the Adam mm-hmm. Friedland Show. I have to say all their names? Yes, you do. Really? That's 100% of the deal. All right, let's do it. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and print those names Thanks out, and Adam's going to read them off, and how we'll many read names the producers first, and then I will lower the volume, uh-huh. and then Adam will read the associate producers That's a good idea. at a slightly faster speed mm-hmm. at a lower volume. I'll, I'll go as fast as I can. Yeah, and there's, to answer your question, there's probably total about 350 to 400 names. <laughs> Hi, this is Adam. Thanks again to our guest, Mike Bolandic. And thank you very much to our producers. Thank you, Jacob Grimm, Jack Dayton, Helios, Matt Millam, Kyber Lanebach, Brandon ba- Blaylock, Silas Zareski, Liam, Brian Allen, Olivia, a girl, <laughs> Ronald, Michael Whitman, Evan, Dual Loot Lipa's Pussy, Tony Coker, Fatso Beef, Abu Bakar Al Bigdadi. Ben Taylor, John Sargent III, uh, Sean Freeman, Boris, 
uh, Kipchak Slim, Jimmy Chocolate Cream Boy Genius, Jacob Landrum, Eric Bunt, that guy, 58, at the Adam Friedland Show Girl on IG, the dumbest bitch in the whole world, Surya Deer, Zach Z, bomb ass dank ass down up north, not my real name, Norvin English Green the Fifth, Debaser, Lennon Yowl, El Greco, Keith, Jesh Mohan, Brian Murray, Matt Bagley, Blackest Crows, No Salvation, Yoav Wertheim, one of my friends over there, um, Ravioli Yum Yum, Josiah, Volcano Farts, Ethan Green, All Right Guy, Jacob Foster, Brian Cronin, Nick Berry, Joseph Stalin, Dry County Blues, Samuel Erickson, Jiska, Stephen Holbrook, Gabriel Mauricio, Ronald Rus- Riverusti, Sam Kirsch. Kirschenheider. Uh, I love planes and comms. My name is Amea Nilkanth. Doxkirada. Skirada. Doxkirada. Doxkirada. <laughs> Aaron Brannon. Tim Dayan. Sonic the Hedge Fund. Levy. Henry Q. Danielson. John Doe. Frank Ruane. Uh, Kerry Finholstetler. Thomas Chalker, Jeff Secord, John Lee, Lauren, Winky, Sam Zico, Deacon3005, Ray, Michael Swartz, Brian Dixon, LJ111, Seth McBride, Oaxaca Flocka Flame, Bento, Arthi Fall, Badger, Yahia Coley, Shane J. LB, Fu State, Gavin Dasuta, Daniel Camden, Aziv, Jeffrey Winterlin, Brett Chrisman, Colton, Quinn Q, Hans Minea, uh, William White, Caleb Gonzalez, David Nolan Jr., Mike Boyer, Brian Cassells, George Grimwood, Kurt Van Hoy, Kevin Delacroix, Jacob Hilton, Derek Ontiverios, Adam Luer, uh, Andrew Moores, Tom Wilkinson, great actor, uh, Joel Corrente, Chicken Lips, Sarah Bande, um, Aaron Krause, Medio- Mediocrison, uh, John Blewett, Brendan Hannaford, Joseph Hall, Michael, Jacob Sauber Cavazos, <laughs> um, Matt Manchester, E. Haunt, uh, Fielding Carpenter, Nick Thornton, Zodiac Griller, F.I., Jack Dayton, Dakota Rogers, Dante de Blasio, uh, Cabron Fiber, Joe Cullen, Wolfgang Schmidt, Munz, Dahlia Zahava, Ben, John, Andre, Castaneda Chavez, Sludge Fuxwell, uh, Elfidio Quinones, Ollie, John Hartman, Davok, Stateside Reds, Derek Culver, Noah Souza, Julia Plummer, Harry Taint, um, very funny on that one, Harry Tate. <laughs> uh, Thomas Bronner, Mark, Nathaniel Lesra, Lord Oglar, uh, Mike BR, uh, Edward Daniel Smith, Dostoevsky Bot, Manuel Vera, David Gebhard, um, Glenn Lee Chun, Craig, Liz, Alberto Jinan, Benjamin Collins, Big Mike, KB, Jacob, uh, Jacob Natag, J, uh, Billy Ziskray, Kyle Friedland, Head Mosley, Area N, Dane Mercuro, Charlie Ambler, Sawyer, Eric D. Schmidt, Brian Hurst, Rick Richard, Richardovich. Thank you. And now for our associate producers. Thank you very much to the font. Jesus Christ is that. Uh, Jake Dunlap, Thomas Patrick Cooper, Skeeter, Rui Faustino, Cole Murphy, Dark Tardis, Philip Shields, Milky Mulkern, Zach Wise, Brad Terrell, Mr. Harris, Mr. Harris, Josh Morgan, Sean Martin, uh, Lucas Sonichu Tice, uh, Mil- Mikolaj Flo Jewett, some Polish shit, Daddy Log Penis, Patricino, Jay Silk, uh, Phil, John, Mike Frazier, L- Lol Passat, Lol. Uh, La Basa, La Pidasa, Mick Nullin, uh, Mr. Shaldsty, Silas, uh, Jovian Avila, Alec Kellisnak, Sam Bales, Silas Green, Dead at 30, Cannibalized by Wife, 
Yavin Arba, Alexander Nos, Jonathan Jones, Stephen Axman, Daniel Leonard, Sila, uh, Pinche Floho, Daniel Gulev, Rion Folan, Sam Murphy, Austin Williams, Mike, Cum Guzzler 182, BH Jones, Sean Aguirre, uh, Joseph Mumford, Paul so- Task Solas, William Jones W, Chris Davis, Thomas Gallagher, Young Boozer, Zara Suka, Harris, Emily Snyder, Gregory Martin, Andrew Cumboy, Wyatt Robinette, Nick Wakeham, Mackenzie, Brett M- Mikesell, Brett Mikesell, Joe Haig, Noah Lester, Brandon Thornton, Franklin McGee, Alex Stichow, Huey Joe, Yusuf Mossad, Robert Reeves, Smart Bimson, Jeff Johnson, Zach, Lex Lewis, Jackson, Britt Hillis, Ben Reb, Ethan Chase Lemons, Ronald Grande, Taig, Lenny Mitchell, Victor uh, Villa Plando, Dakota Sky, Brett Bolin, Bombs Guy, Ted K, Duncan Holmes, uh, uh, Godel Brot, Isaac Reyes, Terracy Fenton, Niall Fife, Zachary Grizzle, Chase Bello, Thomas Brecken, uh, Brennecke, uh, Tony Casa, Colin Martin, Cody Pence, Jesse Ryans, Randy Funfork, Bruh, Wyatt, uh, Ian Taylor, The Real Mad Ox, Daniel Wood, Panda Bear is Great, Desi, uh, Bradley Griffin, Tyler Pinheiro, Tim Roberts, Christopher Crosby, Terrence Brana, now, uh, Big Mike, Richard Haustein, Alistair Matthews, not Ryan Seacrest, Jack Schubot, Frank Reich, um, Michael Garcia, CGF, Kurtz Fungus, Alex Presbo, Alan, Alan Wallace, Alex Ma- uh, McAlvary, um, Sammy D, Luke Myers, Ryan Curo, Riley Croyle, Matthew uh, Medlin, Jason uh, Guadino, Daniel Cisneros, uh, Petter N., David Caffey, Mike S. Drunk, Harper Marchman Jones, Michael Gainham, uh, Sean, A- Austin Heath, Elijah Ebert, Chris, Stro- Stroll the Roll, Eric Sverkult, ABC Rye, David, Michael Girthquake Fuller, that's pretty good. Scott Santiago, Richard Nixon, Keegan Hudson, DM Cernandez, uh, John B., Jeff Tompkins, Eric Scanlon, Ryan Ebert, Matthew Riddle, Alec Love, uh, Snardo Snarf, Brian Cantwell, Benjamin Cost, Adam Jacobson, Charlie Carr, Alex Lafrenery, um, Alex Mach- Machnier, Casey Hines, Nolan, Andy Woodcock, Ronan Murphy, Jake Harmon, Alex Casanova, Devin Davies, Ashley, a girl, Howie Mandel, Justin, Tris Ten, uh, William Haver, Josh New- Neves, Michael Funari, Ethan Mai, Alex Reck, Derek Deemer, L. Suter, uh, Justin Ganat- Ganchi, uh, Core Talks, Justin Wang, James Keegan, Guy Pedersen, CIA PSYOP, CIA PSYOP Enjoyer, gay name, Red Sona, Garbage Patch Kid, Wes Christensen, Sam Tomko Jones, A White 1993 Camry, Gustav Carlson, Matthew Hine, Darren Davis, John Mails, Cody Anderson, Matt Stone, Trufus, Isaiah Nogueira, KPG211, Adam Laker, Philip, Scott Hartman, Fox Trevelyan, uh, Justin Kirkland, B.H., John Pope, Aaron Muse, Russell, Rockwell White, Steve, Ben Hafitz, Spencer Coates, Tom Hawkins, Damian Harai, Ryan Green, Lucas Kaiser, Johan Halen, uh, Money Violence, Chris Langeel, Sebastian Larson, Huge Pop, Andy, Acel, Tom Durenberger, uh, Eric Kennedy, Shane Briggs, At Butt Planet, Chris Kalari, Ga- uh, Gary Furlong, John White, Adita VJ, Peter Panay Frank, Ryan Gessner, Deep Dish Sex Haver, Alex Van Olden, Anthony Weaver, Susanna Coolidge, Andrew Shiv- uh Joe White, Timmy Dixon, Drowsy Thunder, David Korn, Bill Fuller, Nope, ERP47. 
uh, Christopher Prod, Corb, Max Dickfield, uh, Jeff Bialt, uh, Martin McNeish, Logan, Dylan Nelkin, Tyler Masterless, uh, Shy, Nick Brianna, Ann Human, McKenna, Gregory, Gregory Jakub, Jap- Jakubowski, Bort, Robin Cunningham, Lumpy1805, uh, David Vine, Will Marsh, Reese, Rasmus, Reed, George Smith, Toby Hamans, Trevor Schultz, Enzio Priestness, um, Don Shepard, Zato, John Monroe, Ralph, Dustin Cooper, Gavril Rice, Chris James, Parker Hollis, Will Reed, Jack Davies, Johan Krauss, Stephen, Alex Brayfield, Matt Truslow, Bo Emerton, Daniel Stern, Mike W., Michael Levy, Cole Hager, Steve Moody, Emily uh, Wienerstrom, Uncut Zub, Adam Perlstein, Plopadop, Malcolm Hines, Jeff Nooney, A- Andy Cam, These Nuts, St- uh, Stuff Dave Made, Dan, Patrick Tyne, Kyle Dennis, BB, Will Tarantino, Rory, Michael Firestone, Dennis G, Faraz, Chris B, Ni- Nick Stark, Brian Abler, Gordon Hale, Alex, Adam Bevel, Adam, uh, Fagballs, Scott, Daniel Zajak, Rex Blank, Nate Leslie, Corey Soto, Eugene Tucker, Tim Smith, BB, Tyler Langolis, Riley RG, No, Matt Shambler, Josh Thomas, Discount Come Town, uh, Carla Francisco, Alfred Holmgren, Oliver McKenzie, Matt Eaton, John W., Sexy Hitler 420, Casey, Tyler, Jackson, Harry Jackson, John Rutherford, Sean, Chapo Trap House, uh, Bricks, Wilson Hamlet, Harrison Frisk, Total, Allison, Rube, uh, Johan, Patrick Merrill, Jay Wilson, Quinn Myers, Donald Hughes, Colin Lampark, Come Tsunami, Eric Ruda, Tim Levitsky, Nicholas Hagani Avery, Star Rosencrantz, Isaac Reedy, Famine Cameron, Brandon Murphy, Jim, Al- Jim Alexander, Gareth Redmond, Jake Reynolds, jo- Jordan Kendall, Hugh Jass, uh, Matt GOPSN, Emil Scales, uh, Sean Heenan, uh, Jordine 316, Greg D. Jim, Coots Unlimited, Danny, Rood Street Films, Christian Sandlin, Evan Hangerty, Milk and Minnows, Chris Charles Sachs, Andrew Palladino, Young Mizaguchi, Max Brown. Thanks a lot.